What is going on guys? So we officially have the Western Conference Finals set. It is going to be the Phoenix Suns and the LA Clippers, which is still crazy to think about. The Clippers finally broke the curse. They're in the Conference Finals for the first time in their franchise, which has been like, I think they said it was 50 years, which is crazy to think about. And for it to finally be here in the situation that it was, I would love to talk about that game, but, you know, everyone's talking about it, and it's very clear the Clippers got it done against Utah, so, you know, for me, who enjoys, someone who enjoys Utah slander, it was fun to watch, but, okay, so now that that's out the way, I'm going to talk a little bit about basically what this series is, because, I mean, we could have the Phoenix Suns or the LA Clippers in the finals, and that's crazy to think about, but it's also exciting because these are two teams that... Let's be honest, they're fun to watch. I mean, especially with the way the Clippers have, you know, played those last two games in the Utah series and just general, you know, they've had a good run even without Kawhi Leonard and the Phoenix Suns. I mean, I don't even have to say they've been they've been incredible to watch all regular season and in these playoffs, especially. So, yeah, this is going to be a fun series. I'm really excited to see how this goes. And there's a lot of different factors that are going to come into the series and it's going to determine who wins. So, yeah, um, by the way, before I talk more, I would like to inform you guys and ask you guys to please subscribe to the channel and also turn on your notifications so that you don't miss an upload. And also that if you do enjoy this video to please leave a like that makes a big difference in helping this channel grow. So I would agree greatly appreciate it. So for this series, I mean, who's going to win? That's going to be the question, right? I mean, first of all, you have two big things, right? Like, First of all, Kawhi Leonard is dealing with an ACL injury. We don't know if it's a tear or a sprain. We don't even know the severity of it yet, and they haven't even done any tests yet. So, and I bet that they said that they're going to wait till the swelling stops to determine the severity of it. And what some doctors are saying on Twitter and stuff is if it's swelling, then there's a good chance it's not torn and it's probably just like a severe sprain. But regardless of what it is, there is a good chance that we might not see Kawhi Leonard in this series or for the rest of the playoffs. So that's obviously a big blow, right? And then you have that on the Clippers side. And on the Phoenix side, Chris Paul tests positive for COVID, even though he's vaccinated. So that's just terrible luck on his part, you know, for him to have gotten it even after getting vaccinated. That's just terrible. So he's in the healthy safety protocols. And we don't know when he's going to come back. We know that it's highly unlikely he is going to be playing game one. And we don't know what's going to happen after that. Because the timeline for these health and safety protocols is very fluid. There's no set date. And especially if you're vaccinated, I think the time is less. So that's a good sign. You know, you're not the COVID is not severe. And you're probably going to be bet, You're going to be okay, you know, in a shorter time. And the big thing is just going to be having to do a bunch of tests to make sure that you're all good before you play. So with all of that, we don't know when Chris Paul is going to come back. It's I doubt he's going to play game one, maybe even game two. He's probably not going to play. And I think game three, he'll be back. That's just my guess. Don't take it for actual word, but I'm just giving a guess for my like, you know, just my general guess. He's probably not going to play the first two games. And that's going to be obviously a big factor. So, you know. You're going to have Devin Booker and Paul George be the main guys on these teams, which is interesting because the two of them had a little beef when they played in the regular season. They both kind of went after it. So, you know, hopefully we get some interesting drama in this series because who doesn't love some chaos? But I mean, the big thing for me, I mean, there's different things, right? Like who's going to be the guy who gets going, right? Paul George has had the playoff P nickname, the pandemic P nickname, all the slander, but he's showed up especially with Kawhi being out, he showed up, you know, game six, he played amazing, I mean, game five, he played amazing in Utah, game six, he wasn't the main guy who played well, but he still did a really good job, and he's gonna have to be more consistent, if he does that consistently, then that's gonna be obviously very helpful for them, but the big thing for me is Devin Booker has just been so great in these entire playoffs, like from the moment they started in that Lakers series all the way up till now, He's just been great. I mean, that's just not, no other way to put it. He's just been great and consistently great this entire playoff run. For Paul George, it was kind of up and down. He's on the up right now, which is a good sign going forward. You know, you're peaking at the right time. But I just, I trust Devin Booker's consistency more than Paul George. 
And I could be wrong because Paul George could still, you know, play great, you know. But I think the way that Booker has just been consistent, I think that I would give the edge to him in terms of showing up when it's the, when it's needed, especially in this series. And what else is going to be? Oh, the big man battle because the Clippers, I mean, they kind of ran small in the Utah series, which was interesting because they were able to just go after Rudy Gobert and make him look like food, which they did. And, you know, I don't know if they're going to be able to do that against Aiton. And I mean, look, Aiton's not, you know, an elite defender, right? He's not like the best big man, right? But still, he he can guard on the perimeter a little bit. You know, he's not complete food. He's he's solid on the interior, nothing like Gobert, but he's still good. So, you know, can the Clippers use the small ball and run zones and get their shooters open and challenge Aiton to go on the perimeter and guard? That's going to be something to, to watch. And, you know, on offense, I think Aiton is more effective than Gobert on offense. I mean, especially in these playoffs, Aiton has been very efficient from the field. He finishes well at the rim. He takes contact. He's not afraid of it. I think that Aiton could be uh, someone that, you know, could help. I mean, could hurt the Clippers, you know, just on his offensive threat alone. So that's going to be something to watch. How do the Clippers stop that? Is Zubac going to is Zubac going to be enough? Is are they going to have to go big to stop him? That's going to be something to watch. And then the other thing is just going to be who are the other guys that step up? You know, we have I mean Terrence Mann for the Clippers. God damn, he's been amazing, just amazing. That thirty nine point game he had against the Utah in Game Six was special to watch. He's always he was. You know, he's a good guy and everyone knew he was going to be good. But, you know, from being out of the rotation completely, which no one understood, to being, you know, in the big moments and showing out in the big moments, that's huge for the Clippers. And if he can do that consistently, he doesn't need to put up 39 every game. He doesn't need to shoot like Ray Allen, right? He doesn't have to do all that. But if he can contribute the way he has when he plays... You know, he did it in the Dallas series. He did it in Utah. And if he can continue to do that, that's going to be a huge leg up. But um, who else? Reggie Jackson's going to have to continue to play as well as he has. Patrick Beverly even made a few shots. If he can, you know, not be terrible, that would be ideal. Um, whoever's guarding Aiton is going to have to, you know, try to dominate him, which is going to be tough. You know, I don't know if Zubac is going to be able to handle Aiton, if I'm going to be honest with you. And... The thing with that is I talked about the Clippers and, you know, how their supporting guys have shown up. I just, it's probably just a gut feeling, but I'm not sure if they're going to be able to do it in the entire series because they didn't do it in this series. They didn't do it the entire series. Like Reggie Jackson is probably the only one who like consistently showed up. And even then he was a kind of up and down too. But for the Suns, the thing with them is just, they have their all of their guys have all been showing out in every game in every series right so everyone talks about booker going crazy or chris paul having games and they do without a doubt no question but especially without you know your your quote unquote main superstars being out especially with chris paul being out you know that's not as big of a loss for phoenix in my opinion because i think the suns can win this series without chris paul if chris paul didn't play the entire series I still could think the Suns would win because their supporting guys show up. I mean, look, Chris Paul, without him, Cameron Payne has shown up like incredibly. So if he continues to play the way he has, then, hey, you know, losing Chris Paul isn't as bad, right? Especially with Cameron Payne playing the way he is. You have Mikael Bridges, who he shot pretty well. If he can continue to do that, um, I just I think the Suns are more well-rounded. And they're more consistent in their performances. So, like, I feel like, I, like, I think that um, the Suns have a better cast around him. I mean, around Booker. That's going to make it easier for them to win this series. Not easier for them. It's going to be a tough series. But I, it gives them the advantage. That's what I'm trying to say. I think they have the advantage in this series over the Clippers. Because with the Clippers, you don't know who's going to show up, you know? It's never like a, a doubt. A ne- it's never like a... With none of those guys except for Kawhi Leonard, you're, you're not guaranteed to have someone show up like that. You know what I mean? Like, Paul George has shown up, but he's not consistent. Reggie Jackson, probably. Um, Terrence Mann is good. But then, with the Suns, they're more trustworthy. Like, you can trust those guys to show up. 
every game and perform at a high level. So you're not relying on Devin Booker needing all the help. You're not relying on Chris Paul needing all the help. Chris Paul being out is not as much of a hurt as it is for Kawhi not being there for the Clippers. That's how I see it. So with that, my prediction, I don't like giving predictions, but I'm going to do it anyway. My prediction for this series is that the Suns are going to win and it's going to be a seven game series. Yep, I said seven games. I think it's going to be a very good, it's going to be a hard fought series. Games are going to go down to the wire and we're going to really see who, you know, who shows up and it's going to be interesting. But yeah, I have the Phoenix Suns winning this series and the Phoenix Suns, in my opinion, and in my guess, are going to go to the finals. So yeah, that's my prediction. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, leave a like and comment down below what you think about this series. Who do you think is going to win? How many games do you think it's going to go? Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss an upload. And um, yeah, thank you guys as always for your continued support. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.